and welcome back. And do I ever have a good Wang Rider story for you today? About two years ago, uh, Rich got a hold of a Wang Rider 5503, the exact same model that I have here. Only his is a dual floppy model, whereas this is only a single floppy model. However, other than that, they were pretty much identical. And Rich went through a ton of work to try and get it going again. He uh, pulled off the bootstrap ROM and uh, pulled the code off of it to try and figure out what was going on. And that was actually really great because we used it as reference to verify the integrity of our bootstrap ROM. Uh, he also received with the machine the maintenance manual and he went through the painstaking effort of scanning every page in and putting it up on his his uh, blog, which I'll link below because if you want to find information about the 5503, his blog is pretty much it. There's like no information out here on the Wang Rider. And well, that was the trouble. Rich ran into a brick wall because his machine was in a little bit rougher shape than my machine and it didn't work and he wasn't sure how to get it going but he couldn't get in touch with anybody who knew what it was because this machine seems to be incredibly rare. So he reached out to uh, Tony Bogan over at uh, VCF and in a 2021, very early 2021, he donated the machine to the guys at VCF. Well, fast forward to late 2022 and I get my grubby little paws on this Wang Rider and I start the journey of trying to find any information out there. And well, as I said, the only information is Rich's blog. So I reached out to Rich to see if he still had his machine because it would be awesome if there were two of us out there working on these together. But also I needed a system disc and Rich's machine had a system disc with it. And so Rich sent out a couple more emails to VCF and there he got in touch with one Jeff Brace. That's right, Jeff Brace as in the vice president of VCF. Like I'm, I'm dropping names here, <laughs> it's a little wild. Uh, but he got in touch with Jeff Brace and they found his old machine and found all of the, the documentation and the boxes that he donated with it. And a little earlier this month, they were having a sort of test and tune meetup. I really wish I could have been there, but it was way up in the Northeast, which is like, more than a thousand miles from here. So I had to uh, enjoy it from afar, but Rich drove all the way over to meet up with them. And from there, Jeff got in touch with Ian, better known as Sark, who was also uh, at that meetup. And Sark himself is a pretty big name to drop as well. He was the uh, gentleman who repaired the 8-bit guy's uh, Moonbase Arcade CRT at the last uh, VCF meetup. Uh, but Sark got a hold of the system disks, he imaged them, and then he emailed me the images. And uh, well, I pulled out the grease weasel and I've got that system disk image on this floppy right here. And well, now we have a fully working machine with a fully working keyboard. So uh, let's plug this in and see what the operating system looks like. I'm really excited about this. <laughs> All right, I've got the system disk in the machine. Let's flip the power switch on and see what comes up on the screen here. Well, I can see the screen is warming up. We got some junk from the uh, RAM. Oh, that cleared, that's good. Yes! <laughs> Wang Rider release 4.1. Uh, and then we have a menu here. Uh, now, I'm gonna be honest, this is not the first time I have seen this. I actually did a little bit of playing before I set all the cameras up here and uh, started recording. So I'm somewhat familiar with how to use the system, but I gotta say, it is the most intuitive uh, text-based word processing system that I've ever used. It is pretty much WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get and the keyboard is incredibly intuitive to use. So let's uh, write something, something with a lot of formatting. And um, well, there's a movie that I happen to like called Pool Hall Junkies and uh, Christopher Walken gives 
one of the best speeches in history in it. So uh, let's write a script for that speech using the Wang Writer, and that'll let us play around with a lot of the uh, really interesting formatting that we can do with this machine. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to put an archive disk in so we can make a uh, new file, a new document. Uh, and I have a, a spare archive disk here. Um, this is one of the spare ones that I got with the machine. There is legal documents and stuff on here, so I'm just going to overwrite those because I don't need to be reading those anyways. So I'm going to pop the uh, system disk out, put this disk in, and then we need to essentially set this disk up for use on the Wang Writer. Now, it, it's already been set up, but we'll format it and make it completely blank. And we do that by using the utilities menu down here. Um, now, it would make sense to just use the arrow keys, but if I push the arrow key, it just says uh, invalid keystroke. So you actually have to hit the first letter of the menu that you want to go to. So uh, utilities starts with U, so we'll press the letter U. That moves us down to utilities. Then we hit the execute button over here. Uh, and then we have uh, a collection of options. Delete, copy, rename, prepare change, recover, or duplicate. Uh, and we're going to do a prepare. So we'll go with P, hit execute. Uh, let's make the disk name uh, Usagi. We'll hit execute again. It says press execute when archive disk is in drive. It's already in the drive. Uh, it's going to read it and it says this is actually an uh, uh, archive disk already and it's called trust. Everything on there will be deleted that's okay. We don't want to keep whatever confidential stuff is in the trust one here. So we're just going to hit execute and now it's going to start formatting. All right, there we go. Initialization done. Uh, that means that our disk is pretty much ready to be used. Uh, so I need to go back to the main menu and I do that by pressing the uh, cancel key in the top right here. It gets us back to the main menu. We can check out what's on that disk by going to document index. So if I hit D uh, and then execute, it says index of archive disk Usagi. There's nothing on here. But uh, what's interesting is that press cancel to exit here is actually in bold uh, text. It, it's brighter than everything else. And that's a recurring theme for uh, when the system wants you to do something, to select certain text, to edit it or move it or something like that. In this case, we want to press cancel to exit, so it's drawing my attention to that. That's how I get out of this screen. So we're just going to press the cancel key, get back to the main menu. Let's create a new document. Uh, so we'll hit C, hit enter. It's going to ask me what the document name is. Uh, we'll name it Walken because uh, Christopher Walken is the one who gave the speech. We'll hit execute. And here we go. We're at the uh, screen now to start uh, writing whatever it is that we want to write. And uh, really, it doesn't look that strange. Uh, we have a blinking cursor. It tells us what document we're on, what page we're on, our line and our position. And then it's just waiting for me to start typing something. So let's type uh, the very first line here. So I'm going to actually put caps lock on and I'm going to hit the lock key over here. A little light comes on to let me know that caps lock is on. And we'll type uh, INT space uh, the lion speech. Uh, and then I want to turn caps lock off, but if I hit the lock key, it stays on. You actually have to turn caps lock off by hitting shift. This is a holdover to the days of uh, mechanical typewriters because the uh, lock button was actually like a mechanical lock that went in and locked the shift key down. So you had to push the shift key to unlock the lock button. Uh, but there we go. We've got int the lion speech up top. Well, I don't think I can bold this and print it out in bold, but uh, maybe I can underline it. So um, I think if we move the cursor over to the beginning of the I over here, and then I hit command, it's going to say which command, then I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to hit the underscore over here, and it's going to say underscore what, and then I use the uh, cursor key to highlight all of the text that I want to underscore. In this case, it's going to be the lion speech. Hit the execute button, and yeah, yeah there we go. It is underlined. Uh, so we'll hit uh, return, and then we'll uh, give a little bit of information about the scene here. So we'll say that uh, Johnny is in a bathroom. 
oops, I made a mistake. How do I fix that? B-A-T-H-O is not how you spell bathroom. Uh, so I can do it two ways. I can just push the cursor key back and write over it uh, and continue writing from there, saying trying to get his uh, act together. Or maybe uh, I wanted to write washroom over here. So I can go back over to here and I can just delete this altogether by pressing the delete key. And again, it's gonna highlight it. So I'm gonna highlight it. Now I've got bathroom fully highlighted. I'll hit execute, that deletes it. Now, if I start typing in here, it's gonna overwrite everything else. For example, if I type uh, washroom, oh, well, that doesn't seem right. So we actually need to insert text here. So if I hit the insert key over here, you can see that it splits the line where I hit the insert key. And it takes whatever was after that, puts it at the bottom of the screen and allows me to type whatever it is that I want to insert here. So I uh, want to insert a comma space trying uh, space. There we go. And then it'll bring to get his act together. So then we just hit execute. That brings it back up to here. That's the basis of how you do standard editing on here. It's incredibly simple. It's very intuitive and easy to follow. Uh, so I'm going to type out the rest of this right quick. Uh, so we'll say comma and Christopher Walken enters delivering the uh, greatest, we'll just say greatest inspirational uh, speech of all time. There we go. Now, Christopher Walken has the first line of dialogue in the scene, so we're going to start writing dialogue. And, uh, well, scripts are written in kind of an interesting formatted way, so we want to put Christopher Walken's name, uh, or his character name, but Christopher Walken only ever plays Christopher Walken, so we'll just call him Walken. Uh, we want to put that in the center of the screen. Well, it turns out there's just a center button. If I hit that, brings my cursor to the center, leaves a special formatting mark here on the left, and then I can just uh, push the caps lock on, type walk in, turn the caps lock off, hit return, and there we go. We're on the next line. Uh, now, there should be a uh, couple of tabs here to move that in. So I can hit tab once, twice to bring that in, and his first line of dialogue is, uh, you watch those nature documentaries on the cable question mark uh great we're making pretty good progress here uh except that these tabs are going to be a little interesting um so if i move the cursor back up to where we were let's say that his line of dialogue is even longer let's say he just says uh the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog after that so we can see that the tabs brought it over, but then when the text wrapped around, it went all the way back over to the left. And we actually don't want that. We want the text to stay uh, essentially two tabs over all the way down. And uh, I've been dancing around it trying not to say indents because an indent is what we want. We want it to be indented over. Uh, so I'm gonna move the cursor back over to our tabs here. I'll go back up to the first tab here. I'll hit delete. We'll select both tabs. I will delete both of those tabs. That'll move me back over to the left. Then I will do an insert and I will do uh, indent over here on the top right. I'll insert one and then I'll insert two and then we'll hit execute and check that out. <laughs> you watch those nature documentaries on the cable, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, but it's indented perfectly. Now there are a, a couple of mistakes in here. There's uh, on the, there needs to be a space in there. So we'll go over there and select that. And we'll go uh, insert space execute and then uh, we don't actually want the quick round fox jumps over the lazy dog. So I'll just hit delete. We'll scroll all the way over to the end and hit execute. And there we go. We've got our first line of dialogue in the system and we've done a lot of uh, crazy formatting. And I mean, you can see that I, I didn't even read the manual. This was all just pushing buttons and figuring it out. It took me less than two hours to get this proficient in the system. It is without a doubt one of the very best uh, word processing 
pieces of software that I've ever laid my hands on. And well, honestly, a lot of the uh, special functions come down to the buttons up here. Um, it's really a shame that Wang didn't port this over to IBM PC and have it become a more de facto standard for text-based uh, word processing software because it really is fantastic. Uh, but, well, we only have part of the script written, so I'm going to go ahead and write the rest of the script, but there's no real uh, fancy editing stuff to uh, see while I do that, so I'm just going to time lapse it a little bit so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me type very slowly, because I can only manage about 60 words, 70 words per minute. All right, I've got it all typed up and a couple of interesting things happened. Uh, you'll notice that we're, we're on a different screen, but we're still actually on page one. You can say it says now on page one, line 29, uh, position 56, although if I move this over, uh, it's actually line 30, position 40 is the end of what we wrote. Uh, and that actually will fit on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, but an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper is uh, pretty tall and this is a four by three monitor. So they actually have to have uh, multiple screens for one page. And I can move between those screens by pressing the previous screen, next screen buttons over here. So if I hit the uh, previous screen button, that takes us back up to the top where we were. Next screen brings us back down. Now, one more thing you may have noticed, which is painfully obvious, is that there's a ton of formatting marks in here. Every space between a word gets a tiny little dot. Every tab gets an arrow. Every uh, carriage return gets an arrow in the opposite direction. All of these formatting options make it really easy to see exactly how your formatting is set up but it makes it a little difficult to see what it'll look like when you print it. Well, it turns out that you can turn all of this off. All you have to do is hit the command button and then hit the replace button. And there we go, it turned all of the formatting off and that is exactly how it should look when we print it out. Uh, however, I like having the formatting marks on. It makes it really easy to see what's going on. So I'm gonna actually hit command and replace again to turn them all back on again. Uh, now, the next thing that we need to do is, well, we've written our script, but uh, we don't want our actor to uh, have to read it off of this single monitor, so I need to print this out. And uh, that's where we actually have a little bit of a problem. I need to do some work on the print mechanism in there because uh, there's a little piece of rubber that looks like it has disintegrated over the years and kind of turned into a sticky glue that's going to keep everything from moving. However, the printer itself is very much so alive. If I uh, press and hold this uh, lever up here, <laughs> it does all sorts of crazy stuff. So the printer seems to be mostly alive. We just need to fix that gooey, gummy little section in there. So I need to take it just a little bit apart and get that repaired. And then we can print out our script for our actors. We'll start by removing the ribbon, which we have to uh, push this locking lever out of the way, and that allows us to just pop the ribbon itself out. Then we'll tilt the entire assembly forwards, which gives us access to the print wheel. Next, we'll remove the hammer stop by unscrewing it. And uh, you can see that it actually has an offset to it to allow for some adjustability in how far back the hammer comes. And then I'll use a sharp knife to scrape off all of the uh, disgusting goo. For the hammer stop itself, I used a uh, bunch of tape surrounded by heat shrink, which gave a nice uh, little finish here. And then next we'll clean up the platen. And so to do that, we'll push these locking levers in and remove the platen as well as the uh, guide piece that sits under it. And then we'll pull all of the rollers out and give all of the uh, rotating parts a good clean. After that, we'll put it all back together by reinstalling the print wheel and the ribbon. And then next, we'll install the paper guide. It just slots right in and has two little screws that hold it in place. And then finally, I want to clean off the sound deadening that's on the underside of this top cover because it's falling apart anyways. So I just used a bunch of Gugan and an old Ponta card to scrape off as much as I could and then cleaned it up in the sink. All right, I've got it all back together and I've uh, booted it back up into the operating system here. So let's uh, try to print our document. 
Uh, I do have a piece of paper here, but it's just uh, sitting there. We've got to actually feed it in, I think, like a typewriter. And you do that with this lever here. So if I push this lever down, uh, it, it didn't fully feed the paper. It, it slipped a lot. Uh, and that seems to be happening quite a lot. So I'm not entirely sure how to fix any of that slipping. But if we do it twice, there we go. That fed it in to pretty much the exact uh, place that we need it. So the paper is fed in. We're ready to print. So on the menu here, I'm going to hit P execute. Uh, and it's going to read the archive disk. It's going to ask me for the name. The name is Walken. Uh, and then we'll hit execute. And it takes me to the print document menu. Uh, here we've got a couple of options that we can change. Pitch is 10, 12, 15. Uh, we've got a lines per inch. It's set to six lines per inch. I guess that's fine. I don't know. I'm just going to leave uh, all of the settings as they are. Hit execute. It says select printer. Uh, and there's a little button here that says select. So I think you've got to press that. And if I press that, It's printing. It's so loud. <laughs> I, I don't have any of the covers on it, but it is incredibly loud. <laughs> but it seems to be printing pretty quickly. Uh, <laughs> good lord. There we go. It it printed. It printed beautifully. Like th <laughs> that's really good quality. Uh, keep in mind, this is the uh, ribbon and the uh, print wheel that was in it when I got it. I didn't pull out any of the new ribbons or print wheels yet. Uh, now it didn't print fast. It took about well, uh, I don't know. This is about a little over half a page and it took probably about 45 seconds to print this. So if you had to print like 20 pages, you should just go make a sandwich while it prints. Uh, and we still have that feed problem where if you, uh, it doesn't want to pick the paper up very cleanly when you pull this. I had to pull it twice and I don't think that's how it's supposed to be. Um, so that's still something that I've got to address. But I think at the moment it is working well enough to put the cases all back on it, put both the sides back on it and the top on it and get this thing looking absolutely beautiful because I'm going to say that it is 99% working. And uh, well, honestly, I could not have gotten this far without Rich's help. So Rich, if you're watching, uh, and I hope you are because I'm going to send you this link early before anybody else sees this video. But if you're watching, thank you so much. This is unbelievable. The amount of work that you went through uh, for this machine is staggering. Uh, being able to track down the original software, talking to the right people, getting it imaged and sent to me, it's all thanks to your efforts and I could not be more grateful. So thank you so much for helping me to get this Wang Rider up and going. And I love it. I absolutely adore this machine. Uh, so, well, the next step is to uh, hand our script here off to the actors so they can memorize their lines and act out their scenes. And uh, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next episode. But don't leave just yet because we got to watch that actor's scene. I want to see what the actors make of this script. So I'm going to hand it off to them. Hang around and I'll show you the scene in just a second. You watch those nature documentaries on the cable? Yeah? You see the one about lions? Sure. You got this lion. He's the king of the jungle. Huge mane out to here. He's laying down under a tree. He's so big. It's so hot. He doesn't want to move. Now the little lion cubs, they start messing with him. Biting his tail, biting his ears. 
He doesn't do anything. The lioness, she starts messing with him, coming over, making trouble. Still, nothing. Now the other animals, they notice this and they start to move in. The jackals, hyenas. They're barking at him, laughing at him. They nip his toes and they eat the food that's in his domain. They do this and they get closer and closer and bolder and bolder till one day that lion gets up and tears the hell out of everybody. Runs like the wind, eats everything in his path. Because every once in a while, the lion has to show the jackals who he is. What? 